All right. Hello, 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 everyone. The sticker says we are live, and so we are live. I am coming at you today once again from my wonderful husband's office because for some reason he's got the faster internet. I don't know why I can't get bell internet at my house. It just won't go. But if you go a few feet into the back to my husband's shop, we got the faster internet. So here I am once again with my beautiful uh, industrial background and I'm going to open up the chat. Let's see who's here. Want to see you guys pop on. Hello. I'm seeing you all starting to come into the room. It's so amazing. So we got the chat open. Let's see you come and say hello. Um, tell me where you're from. It's always exciting to see where people are from. Uh, last time we had somebody from Texas. We had a lady hop on from Alberta. We had some local ladies too. Uh, so it's always super fun to see where you all are coming in from. So we got the chat open, just waiting for some people to pop on. Uh, I'm hoping everything is working here. Hi, Laura from Texas. Once again, Laura, nice to see you. Love seeing, I love seeing you ladies come in night after night. It is just so exciting to see that we are building a community, that people are so interested in what's being said and what's being done, that they're coming back time and again to, to hear the messages and be part of this and really sort of inspire me to create more for you, which for me is always really super fun. Um, so I am going to once again, start right in with the slide presentation and get into tonight's topic. So tonight, based on what you asked for last time, we are going to start this up and do the Zoom because we like that little Zoom action. Uh, so based on last week's requests, we are starting in on how to make the five love languages work for you, plus how to create a super bombastic online dating profile. And Let's just get into this. Uh, gonna open up the chat again so that I can see when somebody has something to say. Now, just to kind of recap, for those of you that don't know, for anybody who's new, I am Chantal Hyde. I am your host for tonight. I am Canada's dating coach, trademark. Uh, author of eight books on love and happiness and just going to run you through the quick little what I call the elevator pitch of what those books are. So for those of you who are getting over a breakup, Come Back Queen is the book that's going to help you put your heart back together again with a few tips in there on how to get back into the dating world. For anybody who's going online, Fake Love Need Not Apply is really great for understanding what the different types of wrong people out there are you know, who may be lurking, trying to draw you in. Uh, no More Assholes is your vetting process. This, I walk you through two ways that you vet. First is mindset, because you want to understand who's a selfish short-term thinker versus who is a generous long-term thinker. Because if you're getting in a relationship, if that's what you're looking for, then you really want the generous long-term thinker, not the selfish short-term thinker. And sometimes selfish short-term thinkers will say anything in order to get what they want when they want it. So having a no kissing for three months rule is really going to help those ones leave the situation, leaving you open for the generous long-term thinkers. Now, after waiting three months for a first kiss, I now have a book called After the First Kiss because once you're through the courtship phase, you're probably gonna fall into the insecurity phase, which I say insecurity jealousy is not a bad thing as long as it's not controlling, it's just a sign that you're just so emotionally invested that you now have a fear of loss. And we tend to <clears throat> clench up at that point. And so after the first kiss really helps you through the insecurity phase, at which point you can then go into my next book, which is called Fix That Shit. And this one helps you unpack any emotional baggage that you brought into the relationship that's causing fights, that's causing vomits. You know, vomits is, is when you have all this pent up negative energy, frustration, angst, and 
gets triggered by something within the relationship and you just bleh. Next thing you know, you're having a fight, which really doesn't have anything to do with what you were fighting about. It really has a lot to do with stuff that's stored up inside of you that you haven't quite dealt with yet. So fix that shit helps you unpack your baggage. And because we're monkeys designed to imitate, it helps you teach him how to unpack his. And my next book after that is called Say Yes to Goodness. This is called, you know, Basically, this came about from a mantra that I had to repeat to myself over and over after my husband and I stopped fighting. We fought for 10 years. We haven't fought in four years. And let me tell you, it was a transition emotionally to go from something I was so used to doing to a whole new way of being. And I had to keep reminding myself to accept this goodness. Yes, goodness. Yes, I accept you. Yes, yes, goodness. I am, I am taking you in. And I kept myself from being sucked into fights by reminding myself that I was edging into something new and something better. And I wanted to accept it and really take it into my heart and into my soul. And by the way, mamas and papas, Dating 101, which is another one of my dating and relationship books, I wrote that for your teens. There's no swearing in that one. And I wrote it because I really feel like the reason why so many of us are making mistakes today is because we didn't get the education we should have gotten whether it was from our parents or whether it was in sex ed in school. I don't care where it comes from. It needs to come and it's not. And that's why I'm selling so many copies of No More Assholes because so many people haven't been taught how to choose the right partner. And that's why I'm selling so many copies of Fix That Shit because so many people don't know how to be the right partner. And so Dating 101 really gets them early. It gets them in those teen ages and now they have foresight, the kind of force that we didn't have when we were choosing our relationships and making those mistakes. And so this is really going to help the teens. So if you have a young man, a young woman in your life, buy them a copy of Dating 101 and give them a leg up into figuring out how to choose the right partner and how to make it work with them. And then also I have Custom Made which is really just, it answers two questions, which is what am I designed to do? Because some people are asking themselves, like, I feel a drive. I feel I need to do something with purpose, but I don't know what it is yet. So it helps you answer that question. What am I, what am I made for? What is my purpose? And the second question is, how do I get it out in the world? So, uh, Sherry, hi, Sherry. Uh, so those are my books. Now my websites get, at this point, which is incredible, 2,000 hits a day. And these are because there's so many questions that I am on page one on Google, you know, and often I am actually the number one. Like if you Google when is the right time to ask uh, if you want a relationship, I am above the Cosmo article. It is blowing my mind how many people are responding to what I write and loving the advice that I give. Uh, over 16,000 views on YouTube. I get to now say over 2,900 downloads on iTunes. We went up this week again. Dozens of mainstream news mentions. So if you type my name and you click news in Google, you're going to see so many articles where I'm giving advice and mainstream news. Thousands of books sold. Hundreds of women helped. That I know of. Stephanie says, hi. Hello, Stephanie. Good to see you. Love seeing all my ladies come on. This is so exciting, you guys. Uh, if you missed the beginning parts, don't worry. You can catch it on the replay. Uh, so what are we going to learn tonight? We're going to understand how to understand the five love languages, how to use the five love languages in dating, how to create intimacy in your relationship using the five love languages, and our next topic will then be how to create an online dating profile that attracts the right one. So important, you guys. So now, I, I don't know. I've got a thing for memes. I, I love laughing. Just give me an LOL if, uh, if, if, you know, the stuff that I put up makes you laugh. Give me some feedback, guys. This is live. This is interactive. I love hearing your voice. I love hearing from you. I love knowing that you're there. I love seeing you respond. I love responding to you. I have so much fun with you. Stephanie says, LOL. So here's, here's the meme that's going to start off this topic right here, which is understanding the five love languages. Words of affirmation. Your tacos are delicious. 
Acts of service, I made you tacos. Receiving gifts, here's a taco. Quality time, let's go out for tacos together. Physical touch, let me hold you like a taco. And <laughs> Sherry says, tacos for the win. Uh, Stephanie, I do love it because it's all so true. For sure, for sure. So what are the five love languages? We have, and, and here's, you know, I'll quickly go through what each one is. Laura says, ha ha. Uh, words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, acts of service. So we're going to break each one down into how to communicate each one, what actions you should take for each one, and things that you should avoid if this person that you are caring for has that particular love language. Because doing Doing certain things will really rub them the wrong way more strongly than if you did something that was outside of their love language. So words of affirmation, uh, you know, no surprise. This is actually a big one for me. And I, I'd be really curious about other people who are in the same industry that I am in, which is like, you know, self-help, public speaking, that kind of thing, like really out there delivering a message. I wonder if we tested their love language, how many of them would have words of affirmation front and center? Stephanie says, you have to have a sense of humor when dating. Absolutely. Let me tell you, my husband is my husband because he makes me laugh more than anyone on this planet. Um, you guys want to hear a cute story? So he came home the other night absolutely exhausted, which I'm surprised he doesn't do that more nights a week because he works 100 hours a week. And so he came home and I made him his usual snack, chips and salsa or salsa guacamole. And, uh, and then I washed some grapes. And when I came out into the living room, he was on the floor on the dog bed petting little Lulu. So I get on the floor with him and I'm feeding him grapes. And then he lays back and I cuddle up with him and he goes, let's go under the table. And I didn't even think about it. Not even for one second, it seemed like the most natural thing in the world for me to scooch over under the table with him. It's a glass top table. And I was like, oh, I guess this is, this is the view little Lulu has, <laughs> you know. And then we just started laughing so hard because we realized that we did this completely kooky thing. And, and we just didn't even think about it. It's just, we just are weird together. And I remember there is this quote that says, um, and I forget who said it, but it was, it was somebody that we would know. If I said the name, we would all know who it is. Um, I think it was Bill Murray. And he said, basically, like, you know, essentially the best relationships is when you can find somebody who can be weird with you. Anyway, that was a complete aside. So coming back to words of affirmation, diving back into these love languages, really figuring this out, how to communicate words of affirmation. Well, that's really, really simple. Whatever it is that you appreciate about that person, tell them. Tell them in a note. Tell them when you see them face to face. Send them a text message. When you think of something that you love, you adore, you appreciate, that you that that you just think that is kind, that is positive. And bonus points, if it really touches on their character, like, you know, yes, your food is delicious, right? Like your tacos are delicious. Yes, those are words of affirmation. Um, but saying you're so sweet for making me tacos is even stronger because you're touching on who they are as a human being. So what it says here is encourage, affirm, appreciate, empathize, and listen actively. So understand, really like, like understand, observe who they are and see the golden nuggets about their character and personality and then tell them what you see. This will make them shine and glow from the inside out. Yasmin says that is very true. Yasmin, where are you from, my dear? I'd love to hear that. Um, so actions to take, right? Send an unexpected note, text, card, encourage genuinely and often. That is very key. Like you cannot use your words of affirmation too much with somebody when this is their love language. Now things to avoid, non-constructive criticism, not recognizing or appreciating effort. Um, you know, your words weigh so much to somebody 
when words of affirmation is their love language. I understand that sometimes we need to tell a dirty truth to somebody, you know, like my husband, he's certainly enlightened me to the things that I needed to change about myself. And he did teach me this very true lesson that once I, I really took it to heart and I stopped being offended by it and I started accepting it and using it as a lesson, it really changed me for the better. And he said to me over and over, the truth hurts. And it does. And I actually started, I took those words and whenever somebody would say something to me that hurt my feelings, made me feel angry, that, that created the whoosh, which is basically feeling your ego rise up and disagree with what's outside of you. I'd ask myself, what is the truth in what I just heard so that I could learn to be a better human being instead of pushing the truth away just because I didn't like it because I felt uncomfortable. So yes, there are times with, with somebody that their love language is words of affirmation that you will need to tell them a truth that may feel hurtful, but ensure that you are balancing, that you're not only telling them those hurtful truths, that you are also equally telling them the things that are good about them. Raquel says, hi. Hello, Raquel, good to see you again. Uh, physical touch is our next one now. Oh, I mean, really, how difficult it is to imagine how to use physical touch, right? Nonverbal use, body language, touch to emphasize love, like every little touch matters. You know, my husband, physical touch is, is one of his main love languages. And every time I ask him, baby, what do you love about me? More often than not, he'll say how he loves how affectionate I am. Um, so, it doesn't matter how small that touch is, it registers, right? So a little touch on the arm, a little touch on the back of the hand, a little touch on the back of the neck, it matters as much as the big hugs and the big kisses and the big long cuddles. So be sure that you are incorporating touch as much as you can. Yasmin just said, I'm from Texas. Many times in past relationships that I had, each person had a different love language and it was hard to understand because I wanted them to have each one of the qualities. So Yasmin, I think what you're saying is, um, you know, maybe that you want them to incorporate each of the love languages, uh, for you, like, towards you, which a lot of people say, whenever I have people do the five love language quiz and they look at what the five are for the first time and they go, well, I want all of this. And I'm like, absolutely. We all want some of everything, but one of those things is the most important one to you. And understanding that gives you a clue for what to fight for in a relationship. Because sometimes we see what other people are getting and we go, I want that. So we might see a friend have a boyfriend who buys her expensive jewelry and we think I would feel better about our relationship if my man bought me expensive jewelry. If he bought me a nice pair of earrings, just a nice, can, why can't he buy me just a nice pair of earrings? But if your love language is actually words of affirmation, then getting those earrings without hearing kind words will not fill the void. So understanding what your love language is helps you understand what you really, really should be asking for in your relationship. Uh, <laughs> Yasmin says, correct. So I hope I helped you there, Yasmin. Um, so physical touch, actions to take, hugs, kiss, hold hands, show physical affection regularly, make intimacy a thoughtful priority, 100%. Think about when was the last time you touched them. And if it's been a while, if it's been a day, like any, anything longer than a day is too long for somebody who's, whose love language is physical touch. They need it. They crave it. They feed on it. It fills them up. You got to fill that bank up every day for them. Things to avoid physical neglect, long stints without intimacy, receiving affection coldly. Oh, it's so important when they are affectionate with you that you don't push it away. Like my, I have two love languages that equaled, like basically scored the same high score, which was words of affirmation and physical touch. And all my other boyfriends before my husband, I'd kiss them and I'd kiss them and I love kissing them. And then they push me away. Like they, they were done. Their cup was full and they were finished. And it's like, get off me now. 
My husband never, ever does that. He is never finished with the amount of affection that I give him. And I cannot tell you how happy that makes me that I can kiss and hug and hold him for as long as I want. And he never pushes me away. He's never awful up. It means the world to me. So if you are with somebody whose love language is physical touch, understand that you will never give them too much, but it will feel hurtful if they feel like they are too much to you. So if your love language isn't physical touch, try to bear with it when they're lovey-dovey with you because in that moment, if it's filling them up. And so you really are doing them a service by allowing them to just be physically affectionate with you until, huh, you know, they need that cigarette, you know, till they're satisfied. You know what I mean? So receiving gifts is the next one. So, you know, all of us want little gifts. All of us want baubles. Sometimes we want big gifts. And that is absolutely cool and fine. But for some people, it is the most important thing in the world. And for these particular per people, it is not the gift that matters so much as the thought behind the gift. You need to observe them very, very carefully. They will drop hints. Um, and so listen really carefully to what they're saying. Observe what they're paying attention to. Look for what they are yearning for. Look for things that even they might not even be thinking about, but that might be a little bit of a void for them. Um, you know, maybe they're a scrapbooker and they really love scrapbooking, but they haven't treated themselves to some scrapbook things for a while and they're not talking about it necessarily but you see them still like pinning stuff on Pinterest so you know the interest is still there and so maybe they're just saving money for something else so for you to buy something that's like scrapbook related would be a big deal to them right so observation is really important when it comes to people who have gifts as a love language so how to communicate thoughtfulness, make your, your spouse a priority, speak purposefully. This is on the receiving gift side still. Um, actions to take, give thoughtful gifts and gestures. Small things matter in a big way, 100%. Express gratitude when receiving gift. Yes, I mean, because they try to do the same thing for you, right? Like we tend to speak our love language. And so somebody whose love language is gifts, they're going to be listening. They're going to be watching. They're going to try to give you something special. They put a lot of thought into this. And so feeling like their gift fell flat really kind of makes them feel dejected and rejected. So be very careful about how you receive a gift, even if it's not your thing. Like for me, gifts falls dead last. Like I scored a couple points on that when I took the love language quiz. Um, but I try to be enthusiastic and happy when somebody gives me a gift, especially when that's their love language. Uh, Sherry says, mine is quality time and acts of service. And she also says, and then physical touch. All of them really at this point, though, except for gifts, LOL. See, same here, Sherry. <clears throat> so what would be horrible for somebody if gifts is their love language is forgetting special occasions, uh, right? Oh, I said that, unenthusiastic gift giving. So the next one is quality time. Now for people for quality time, sometimes you have a long distance relationship. And so quality time really means setting time aside for them where you're going to be on the phone, where you're going to be FaceTiming, and then also making sure throughout the day that you're sending them messages, text messages, emails, um, you know, things that make them feel like even though there's a physical distance between you, you're still connected. You're bridging the gap. That is super important for people where quality time is their love language. So how to communicate uninterrupted and focus conversations one-on-one -on -one time is critical. <clears throat> so for these people, you know, like taking a weekend away would mean the world to them. That would be the ultimate gift would be, you know, we've had such busy lives and we haven't had much time. We've had moments here and there, but I'm setting aside this block of time that is just for you. That is everything. Actions to take, create special moments together, like take walks, do small things with your spouse. Weekend getaways are huge. 
Distractions are things to avoid. So distractions when spending time together, long stints without one-on-one -on -one time. Don't have your phone when you're spending time with these people. Um, you know, really make them feel like they are your everything in those moments that you have together. I understand we have busy mamas and papas. I understand that we have busy single moms and dads. And so sometimes you're dating somebody or, you know, and, and it's quality time is your love language or it's their love language. So really the important thing is carving out some time and really making it all about them. So turn the phone off, shut the laptop down. And if it's their love language, ask them, what would you like to do? Let them tell you how they want to fill that time up because this is their special time. This is how they fill their love bank. So let them have it their way and you will help ensure that their love bank is full. And the last one is acts of service. So this is my husband's. So every single day, I make sure that I say these words to my husband. Baby, would you like me to do something for you today? And this is so important to him. Even if there is nothing that he wants me to do for him, even, and, and there's things that I do for him every single day. I make him his meals. I come bring him to him. I, I do his laundry. I fold the clothes. I, I put it away in his dresser. It's like, I do what I can to make everything that I can make easy for him. Uh, you know, when I put his clothes in the, uh, in the closet, I, I put the t-shirts together and the long sleeves together and the shirts together so that his, his clothes is easy to find. Um, even when I put the, the lid on his travel coffee mug, I make sure that it's, it's facing the right way. Like these little things that I know sometimes go unnoticed for him, but I know that it's an act of service. I know that I'm servicing him and I know that it makes him feel loved. So even if he says, no, that's okay. I don't have anything that you need to do for me today. Me asking fills his love back because it tells him that I'm willing to do an act of service for him and that makes him feel loved and that's important. Um, so how to communicate, use action phrases like I'll help. Uh, they want to know you're with them, that you're partnered with them. Um, actions to take, do chores together. You know, when I see my husband uh, doing stuff outside, uh, if I can, then I'll, I'll stop working and I'll, I'll grab some gardening tools and I'll go work outside too. And I can, I can feel, you know, sometimes you can feel someone's energy. I can feel that he, he's, there's like a bonding that takes place because I'm out there working with him. Um, make them breakfast in bed, <laughs> you know, pretty much what I do. Uh, you know, it, although he's, he's up and at him when I'm making breakfast. Uh, go out of your way to help alleviate their daily workload. So what, you know, whatever you can do, those little things, they really matter. Making the requests of others. So things to avoid, what you should not do. Making requests of others a higher priority, lacking follow through on tasks, big and small. The worst thing, like just think, like if your love language was physical affection, and, and your partner wasn't giving you physical affection, but you saw them giving it to someone else, wouldn't that just make you feel like WTF? What is going on? Like, why are they loving someone else and not me? It's the same thing with all of these love languages. If you are doing it for someone else and you're not doing it for them because it's their love language, because they see that behavior as love, you giving it away, but not giving it to them makes them feel like you love other people more than them. So I'm going to give you guys some downloads here. Um, now I know some of you guys are, are doing this on your phones. So, um, and some of you are doing this on the replay. I'm not sure if the files are going to come up on the replay or not. So feel free to message me and ask me to email you those files. So what I'm going to share right now is a JPEG of the five love language quiz. And you can actually find this online. So if you Google five love language quiz and you click on images, then you will actually find this online. 
And I'm going to have this up just for a moment um, because now what I'm going to bring up is a another test. And basically, I just I I put all those questions together. I put them in a prettier form, um, and and I I kind of did this so that you can download this, you can print it out, and and you can do this with people and it just looks a bit a bit prettier than the version that you can get if you go online and you um and and you just clicked on the images for the five love, love language quiz and and found that one so when it comes to dating and i want to see your lols cuz i just put another meme up let me know if you like this one, because I got to tell you, dogs with eyebrows on them crack me up. Some people take Sharpies and they put eyebrows on their dogs. And I actually did this with little Lulu, and it kills me. So we got this suave-looking dog with his eyebrows on going, hey, baby, what's your love language? Now, I highly encourage you. To learn, yeah, Silara says, LOL, Raquel says, adorable. I highly encourage you to print out these tests and hi, Deanna, to print out these tests and bring them on a fourth date. Because why not? Listen, if, if you went on a first or second date and you said, I like you, I want to see where this goes, but I don't want to kiss anybody I don't know, which is why I'm using a no kissing for three months rule, because everybody's lip secretes a chemical that doesn't do anything to them till it comes in contact with another set of lips. That chemical combination creates an aphrodisiac. That's why kissing precedes sex, but it has a secondary effect on the female brain and it makes us think that we have chosen a mate. Because if you think about your fertility cycle, which is on 24 seven versus my fertility cycle, which shuts off. And you think about the fact that we're mammals designed to procreate. And you think about all the other mammals that are out there, you realize that mother nature designed you to plant a seed when the female is ready, but designed the female to observe the males first. And so if you have this conversation, you say you're not going to kiss for three months and you take out your phone, you've whipped for three months and you go, here's the date of our first date. And here three months later is when we will have our first kiss and you get to a fourth date. Well, might as well really start figuring out who this person is because he is in. I mean, he might be stringing you along, but he's not going to last three months. So let's give him a grain of salt and let's really start figuring him out. And here's what happens when you don't kiss for three months. You get to know each other. So get to know each other. Bring that love language quiz and say, hey, I have you done one of these? Do you know what your love language is? No, let's do this together and do it with him because then he doesn't feel so weird just sitting there doing it alone and and you do want him to do it and why not start doing things as a couple right because this is like this is the time for you to figure out how you would be as a couple so when you bring up something new when you say let's do something together that is exploratory that's different that isn't the norm what does he say what does he do this is a great opportunity to really figure out who this person is in so many ways not just the love language way but how does he respond when you want to dig deep let's find that out so bring a love language quiz on a fourth date and say let's do this together what do you guys think of that love to hear your feedback on what you think would happen if you showed up on a fourth date with two love language quizzes and said, hey, let's do this together. Now, let's say he is a good man who is open to new experiences, loves figuring himself out, really wants to figure you out, and did the love language quiz with you. And you guys told each other what your love language is. You had an interesting conversation about love languages. What do you do going forward? Will you start applying that knowledge? Uh, Sherry says, I figured the three-month rule is plenty for date two. Yeah, that's why we're doing this on date four, <laughs> Sherry. Sherry says, I almost asked on the second. 
Uh, so you tell them the first date. Stephanie says, so you tell them the first date, no kissing. So Stephanie, you want to do this if you feel this has potential, right? So sometimes on the first date, that's when you figure out that you don't want to continue seeing this person that, you know, this isn't for you for whatever reason, then there's no point breaking up the no kissing for three months rule. This is really something that you do when you generally do want to see where it goes. And so basically, if you feel you want to kiss him and you feel he's interested in you too and would want to kiss you, you are essentially having a conversation instead of a kiss. And it's important to have the conversation. Um, it's important to show him the calendar date. It's important to really make it clear so that he understands in a very real world kind of way. Like that calendar date makes it understandable to the male brain because it is tangible. So, you know, again, if you want to kiss and you think this is where you're going, then you have the conversation. That might happen on the first date. It might happen on the fourth, right? So it all depends on you, on him, on how things are progressing. Stephanie, okay, sounds good. So the more you like him, the more you would use this knowledge about the love language, about his love language. So if it's physical touch, then the more you like him, the more you touch him. If it's quality time, the more you like him, the more time you make for him, or the more you let him know how much you wish you could make time. You know, again, I understand some of you are busy single moms and dads. I get that. So sometimes just communicating your desire to be able to do their love language for them tells them that you care. And that can be enough to put a few dollars in their love bank. Stephanie says, so what if you get along with someone but not sure if there's chemistry on first date? Do you go on another date to see? Absolutely. Absolutely. I say this over and over again. People, you are not looking for the spark. The spark is what has led you wrong over and over. Think about how many people you've been in a relationship with because there was initial chemistry that you broke up with because it just wasn't compatible. You were not looking for the spark. You were looking for the slow burn because the slow burn is so sexy. It's so beautiful. It is a build. Like think of what a spark does, right? It's like whoosh and then gone. That's what the spark is. But the slow burn, like think about when you start a campfire and you start it with like just the, the tiniest twigs, you know, some paper and some really super small twigs. And then you add bigger twigs on top of that and then bigger branches on top of that. And then eventually you can start adding logs. Now you start piling logs around those logs and you create something that is hot and intense. That is what you're looking for. Um, Yasmin, yes. Lasmin says, I love that question stuff. What do you guys think of the answer? Love to hear that. And you want to observe after you've done this love language quiz with him. And now that he knows how you fill your love bank, is he using that knowledge? That is definitely something you should pay attention to. Guys, my Maggie is hanging around. There might be some thunder on its way because she's acting like a scared doggy under my desk. Poor, poor baby. I'm hoping she's not going to undo my wires here. So if everything starts going wonky all of a sudden, it's because Maggie just tripped herself on all these wires that I have hanging around me. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, so if you're seeing somebody and you're doing the no kissing for three months rule, um, you know, he seems nice enough but he's not exercising his knowledge of your love language. That is something of a red flag because you want to be in a relationship with somebody who is actively trying to make you happy. So if he has something as obvious as knowing how to make you feel loved and month one goes by, month two goes by, and he's not using that knowledge, I would say that's a red flag. 
And I would say maybe consider not kissing this person because the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And you want to get in a relationship with somebody who acknowledges how you feel loved and not only acknowledges it, but actively wants to make you happy, wants to do those things. So do take that into consideration. Hold on a sec, guys. Maggie, over here. Go. I'm really scared she's going to knock stuff over here. Okay. Sit. My poor baby. She doesn't like thunder. We've had like a bunch of rainstorms today. Down. There we go. So now on to how to use the five love languages in a relationship. I love this meme. It's so cute. So um, somebody, uh, I think this was on Twitter, said my love language is making fun of each other until one of us goes too far and then we're in a fight, which is typical. This is what happens when you don't know each other's love language. People often fight because there is a misunderstanding about how to love the other person. Stephanie says, because compatibility is key, 100%. Find somebody compatible to get in a relationship with. Don't get in a relationship and then hope that they are compatible. That's what this whole no kissing for three months rule is, is to help you find somebody compatible that you can then work towards the future with, that you can build a life with, that you can buy that house with, have those kids with, get married to, whatever it is that you want to do, ensure that they are compatible first and then begin that journey. And when you are in that journey, say you're already there, because some of my listeners are in a relationship, some of you are about to get in a relationship, so let's prepare you. I say, I have failed if I teach you how to get in a relationship but not stay there. When you get in and then you get out and you get in and you get out, I call that the bounce. I want to keep you from doing the bounce. I want to help you find that right partner and no more bouncing. Stay. Make it work. Have something awesome. Have something amazing. Stephanie says, so I'm talking to a guy having great conversations with and asked him what his idea of dating is. That's a great question. Stephanie, let, let us know what the answer is. I'd love to hear that. Um, so love languages and relationships. I advise you to have everybody that you love take this test. When I'm talking to parents, I say, I say, have your kids take the test because why shouldn't you know what fills your child's love bank? Sometimes we think we know and sometimes we think we know our own. And I will tell you, when I have people take this test, 50% say they thought they knew what it was going in and then found out that it was something else. And there are 30 questions on this test. And some of them, it's hard to choose between the two because both, and it's, it's always A, B, right? Choose one or two, choose one or two, choose, choose this one or that one. And, and 30 times you have to choose one above the other. And sometimes it's really hard because both of them are so appealing. But this is the beauty of this test. It gets you to dig deep and really, really, really figure yourself out and find out what is the most important thing to you because again, you don't want to fight over everything. You want to fight for what is most important to you. And then again, we like all five, so distribute the rest among your friends and family. So if physical affection is your love language, but you also like getting gifts, don't get angry at your partner for not giving you a gift if they're giving you enough affection. Fill yourself up in terms of gifts from friends and family, right? Don't fight about something that isn't as important to you as your main love language with the most important person in your life. It doesn't make any sense. Stephanie says, wants to date one person to see if you're compatible or not. He says, how can you decide if you want to commit if you are dating other people? Let me answer that for you, Stephanie. Uh, so he says he doesn't want to date a lot of women at once, and that is great. That's wonderful. Um, now, here's what I say, and I say this to both men and women, and men actually do come to me for dating advice, and men actually follow the no dating for three months rule. It is incredible, the feedback that I get from men who say I went on a date and I introduced the no kissing for three months rule, because here's the thing about men, not guys, 
not selfish short-term thinkers, but generous long-term thinkers. They are looking for their long-term partner. They understand that they will fill the space beside them for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And so they know, they're smart enough to know that the best things are hard earned and take time to create and achieve. And it makes sense to them to wait to not kiss for three months if you're looking for a long-term partner because they want to choose the right person to be by their side. Now, somebody who's just looking for fun is not going to like that rule, in which case you have to say, I'm not telling you what to do. This is what I'm doing to choose my next partner. And those people who just want something fun, who are in selfish short-term mode, which there's nothing wrong with that. I have been there. I spent a whole year in that after being in an abusive relationship for three years. I just wanted to get out and have fun and not commit to anybody, but I didn't want to isolate myself. I didn't want to not see people. I didn't want to not explore myself sexually. And so it's okay to be in selfish short-term thinking mode it's just not okay for us to pick somebody from there and try to pull them into generous long-term thinking mode. We need to choose from the right category and no kissing for three months helps, you know, clears the way. It takes the selfish short-term thinkers out of the equation, leaving us to choose from the generous long-term thinkers. Now, what this man is saying, saying he doesn't want to date a lot of women at once, wants to date one person to see if they're compatible or not. And and he says, how can you decide if you want to commit if you're dating other people? He says, once you get to know each other a bit, then you know if you like each other, which is 100% true, Stephanie. He is echoing what I say. The three-month no kissing rule should absolutely make sense to this person if what he is saying is genuinely true. And again, that's another reason to use that rule because sometimes they say things that sound right. Like, you know, the term good on paper. Sometimes they say things that sound right just to reel us in. So you introduce the no kissing for three months rule and you stick to that rule to make sure that they understand that you are serious. If they make it to the end of three months with you, you know that they are serious. Um, but I say this to both men and women, no kissing also means you're not committing, which means you don't owe anyone your commitment, which means that you don't need to put blinders on. You can see other people during that period because you're not committed to any particular person. And, and you don't have to tell them you're seeing other people. You don't. That's your business. You can go on dates with other people. You can explore other people. You don't need to bring it up and say, by the way, I'm dating other people and seeing other people. That's your business. And, and you might be seeing this one person over the course of three months, explore other people for a day, a week, two weeks, three weeks, and drop them because they weren't right for you while continuously exploring this particular person at the same time. That is completely okay. And if they ask, and yes, Stephanie, no kissing means no other sexual stuff, 100%, but no kissing doesn't mean no touching. So you can hold hands, you can cuddle, you can, you can grab his arm and just lean against it. You can kiss his neck, you can kiss the side of his cheek. I really just got into that little tender spot up in the corner of my husband's eyes before we were kissing on the lips. There's so many ways to show affection, to show appreciation. You become inventive when you don't go for the lips and then sex. You will see it will blow your mind. Um, but if you're seeing somebody and they ask, are you dating other people? Are you seeing other people? I always say you want to start the relationship on the same foot that you wanted to continue on, which is open and honest about who you are, right? You want to be in a relationship with somebody who loves and appreciates who you are. So if they ask, then do be honest. And you say, yes, I am, because I want to make sure that I'm making the decision that's best for me. But I'm using the no kissing for three months rule with everyone because I don't want to kiss the wrong person. And they should appreciate this. If this information drives them over the edge and they get crazy jealous and they get controlling and you should shut down your dating count and you should stop seeing those other people, it is before the three month period. You think if he's this controlling today, he's going to be less controlling after you kiss him? 
take that to heart. You want to be with somebody who respects you, who respects your goals, who respects your decisions, who respects your autonomy. So do answer that question honestly and do see how he reacts to it. There may be some jealousy a little bit. There may be a little bit of possession. There may be a little bit of insecurity and it will trickle through in small, tiny clues. But if it is controlling, he's got to go. If he tells you what you have to do, I'm not going to keep seeing you. If you see other people, you're not kissing yet. And he's trying to control you. This is a red flag. This no kissing for three months rule really digs up a lot of red flags. So pay attention and stick to the no kissing for three months rule and see what happens during those three months because anybody can be great for a short period of time, but how long can that greatness last for? Where is the consistency? Is he consistently great or does he start to devolve and become consistently controlling? Be very watchful during this three month period. Uh, so, love languages and relationships. Have everyone you love take the test. Every family member, every friend that you want to ensure that you are loving to your full capacity in a way that they understand and feel loved by. Get them to take the test. It will enlighten you in so many ways. And learn how to translate. So I'm going to tell you a little story about my husband and I. I did not know that his love language was acts of service. He did not know that my love language was words of affirmation. Yes, we both met on the physical affection part, but he worked days and I worked nights and we were ships passing in the night. And so we had little time for physical affection and I started feeling starved for love. And I started saying these words to him, you don't love me enough. And he would lose his mind. He'd say, what are you talking about? I did this. I did that. I did that. And it didn't register because I was not translating. So we ended up taking the five love language quiz. And I realized that the things he was doing was how he was showing me that he loved me. And after that, whenever I started to feel like my love bank was empty because I wasn't getting enough words because my husband is a man of few words, I'd ask myself this very important question. And you guys, you will hear me say this time and again, life begins when you ask the right question. So I, I get into this space where I feel like my love bank was empty and I think those words, he doesn't love me enough. And then I catch myself and I go, wait a second, what has he done for me lately? And I'd start going through his behaviors and I very quickly come up with a list of things that he had done. And I realized that he was definitely loving me and I'd fill my bank up on those behaviors and I'd go about my day. And instead of going to him and acting out this emptiness inside of me, I'd fill myself up with the knowledge that he did indeed love me by translating his behaviors into love. Even though access service was not my love language, I would translate it into my language and thereby fill myself up with it. So it is very important when you do this love language quiz, if your love languages differ, that you begin translating so that you do feel loved by their behaviors and learn to divide your love languages. So, you know, you remember how I said we, we do want a little bit of everything. No single person can do all five and nor should they do all five for you. Do not have that expectation that one person can love you in all ways. This is an undue stress on your relationship. Divide the love languages. So don't demand gifts from somebody where gifts is not their primary love language. Like for my husband, the worst thing I could ever ask him to do is to go buy me a bobble. It is the abs. I mean, this guy shuns birthdays. He shuns Christmas. He shuns Valentine's day. Uh, he does take me out for dinner on our anniversary. When we remember it, I mean, both of us at this point, we're just so in love that we're indifferent to dates. Uh, so it just doesn't even matter anymore. In fact, 
um, my husband was telling me, like, we were just kind of mulling over how many years we've been married. And he said, it's going on seven or eight years. And I went, what? Really? Because it just, it doesn't seem like it's been that long to me. But yeah, we got married in January of 2012. So divide the love language up, languages up among other people so that you're not putting so much pressure on one person to be everything for you. And be sure you follow my number one relationship rule. It is not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. So if you were sitting there going, why isn't he loving me? Why isn't he doing my love language? The question back to you is, are you exercising their love language to them? So don't, don't demand that people do things for you unless you've done them first. And if you have, if you've put in that effort over and over and over again, you've released expectations. So it wasn't like I give with one hand and I put the other hand out in demand. It was I give and I release, I give and I release. And eventually you realize that this giving, this generosity is not coming back to you, that you're with a selfish person, then you have earned your way out. But you must give before you take. That is how love truly works. So guys, what did you think about, uh, about this lesson on the love languages? Like I'm, I'm curious, what do you feel was the most enlightening part of that lesson? I'd love to hear, you know, where the light bulb went off. Um, what do you think that you're going to do differently? Is there something you're going to incorporate? Is there, is there someone that you thought of that you're going to hit up with the five love language quiz that might be outside of dating and a relationship that you're like, you know what? Like I, I care for this person so much. I really want to understand them a little bit better and I want to delve into who they are and I'm going to get them to do this task because I really want to love them on their level. Love to hear that. And then we're going to get into our next topic. So here's another meme. Let me know if you like this one. So the types of headache, we have the migraine, which is kind of like up around the eyes. We have the hypertension, which is at the back of the head. We have the stress headache, which is the band that kind of circles the head. And then we have the online dating headache, which just encompasses your whole head and face all together. Uh, Sherry says, understanding that we do things from our own language. Yes, 100%. Uh, Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie's digging my meme right now. She says, so true. <laughs> you know, I did a poll a little while back. I asked some of you, uh, are you still dating online or have you given up? And 50% of you had given up because there's so much BS online. There's so many guys that are trolling for sex. There's so many, there's so much disrespect. Um, because the guys who are trolling for sex, you know, they're bulldozers, right? They don't care about who you are. They don't care about your character, your personality. All they care is about getting what they want when they want it. And they're just sending out all these signals to try and get it. And they're trying to bulldoze anyone who is not strong enough to stand up to them. Um, so Stephanie says, I'm online dating now, just restarted after a year break. Laura says, I agree <laughs> with, with the meme and Sherry. Um, oh, I see. I, so Laura agrees with Sherry that understanding that we do things from our own love language. Yes, that is so very true. And that, that's, you know, what I was doing. Like I was telling my husband, you're so amazing. You're such a great person. Um, but not understanding the, those words really didn't mean that much to him. What meant something to him would be my willingness to do him a favor. That was the most important thing. And words were like way far down the list of, of what made him feel loved. So how to create your online profile. Now, here's the thing that you need to understand about the guys who are trolling online. They are only looking at pictures. They are not reading your profile. And so your first picture, that image that shows up, that first image, the sexier that image is, the more likely you are to get a message from that guy because they are looking for women who are sending out a signal that says, I want sex. 
And that may not be what you want. It may not, if, if you want sex, then make your picture sexy. If you want a relationship, you want to use a different picture. So if you're looking for sex, then you want to show sexuality, right? So you want the boobs out. You want to show the curves. You want to do a sexy pose. You want to do the pouty face for sure if what you want is sex. And by the way, guys, I don't judge that one bit. If you knew my sexual history, you'd be like, man, that's a wild child because you might not have ever met a woman like me. But if you want a relationship, you need a whole new set of tools. You need to do things from a different way because you need to trigger A, a different breed of male, and B, you want to trigger a different part of his body. You don't want to trigger his penis, which the penis will be triggered anyways because, look, men are designed by Mother Nature to plant the seeds. She made them hot and ready all the time. Their fertility cycle never shuts off. Stephanie says, I had a guy asked to hook up when I had no pickup. So apparently just physical attraction wasn't even a priority. That's just how desperately they're trolling for sex. Um, but you can reduce some of those trolls simply by changing that first photo. So make it you doing something that you love, not you looking sexy. This will reduce some of the trolls who are just looking for sex, who are just looking for somebody who is receptive to sex because they're not going to read that into your photo. And this will increase the chance of the man who is looking for a relationship, who's looking for that long-term partner of him clicking on your photo. Because if what he sees you doing is something he loves to do, you've just triggered a part of his brain and you want that. Now, yes, his penis is going to move because he finds you attractive, which is also part of the reason why he clicked on your picture, because he found you attractive. But here's the thing, you wanna trigger his brain and then his heart and then you engage the penis. That is the order that you do it in. So when your picture shows you doing something you love, you just piqued his curiosity. You piqued his interest because he went, oh, I can see myself beside that woman doing that very thing. Stephanie says, I just did a normal picture, no makeup. That is great. But have you doing something, not just, not just a selfie, not just a pose, not just, you know, a background, not just your friend taking a picture for you to post online. Do something you love. Whip out your camera, give it to a friend and say, Hey, take a picture. Um, add three more pictures of you inside your profile, right? So now hopefully we cut down on the amount of trolls. Obviously some of them are so desperate, it just doesn't even matter if you have a picture or not, they'll take any vagina. But you are not gonna trigger the ones who are just really looking for someone receptive, right? Someone obviously receptive. So you're gonna cut down on some of those uh, and you're gonna pique the interest of the man who's looking for a long-term partner, seeing you do something that he loves to do and he's gonna click and go, inside your profile and he's going to look at your pictures and read what's in there. So again, these next few steps are also very important to triggering his brain and his heart. So add three more pictures. You don't need to add a bazillion because you really just want to interest him. This is your introduction. So three more pictures of you doing things that you enjoy doing. It could be another picture of you doing that favorite thing and two other pictures of you doing two other things that you really love to do. So make sure that they are things that you love to do. They are visual creatures. So be representative of you and your personality and your activities in these additional photos inside. Don't do any pictures with friends or family. Don't make him have to pick you out in a group. That's not fair to his brain. <laughs> Keep it simple. Um, I see many men complaining about women who post group pictures and they're like, you know, now I gotta play a game. I gotta figure out which one is her. Uh, he's not so familiar with you visually. Just let him just focus in on you. So make those pictures of you and you only. Um, and then you're gonna write your bio. 
Now, this is key to the intelligent man. The intelligent man loves to educate himself. So what is he going to learn about you when you write your bio? What you say and also what you don't say are two very important things to consider when you're writing this. Um, now, first of all, length. Don't make it excessively long um, because men are creatures of fewer words than women are. Now, our brains are different and our thought processes are different and the amount of words that we use per day are also different. So women tend to use 20 to 30,000 or 20 to 25,000 words a day. Um, or was it 15 to 20? But is, is, I think it was 15 to 20 actually. Sorry about that guys. Men process about five to 7,000 words a day. So considerably less than we do. So you want to be very concise in your language. You want to be descriptive, but don't use more words than you need to. And you want to describe who you are. Add a little bit of humor in there. That's always fun. Like I was helping somebody write a, a profile a while back. And, uh, and I said, you know, what do you like to do? What's fun for you? And she said, well, I really love to bake, but you know, even if I burn things every now and then, I don't care. And so I, ha I actually had that write that into her bio. I love to bake, even if I do burn things every now and then, right? Like it's, it shows that you're human. It shows that you have flaws and you accept your flaws. You're okay with your flaws and you can just let stuff roll off of your back. That's what he will read into that statement that he doesn't need to be perfect because you already know that perfection doesn't exist. Um, what do you like to do on a weekend that would be ideal for you? How do you see yourselves doing most weekends with your partner? Not a fabulous like, oh, I love to go out to the country and do some antiquing and get a bed and breakfast. Are you gonna do that every single weekend? Probably not. So talk about what you would do on most weekends so that he can imagine what a normal life would be like with you. Not the castle in the sky life, normal life, regular life. Good men are regular folks, so speak their language. Be regular, be normal, be you. Describe yourself, describe how you are, describe how you live so he can see himself enjoying that with you if that is who he is and we want to find someone compatible right so by being descriptive in that way you'll find somebody who can fit your life like a glove and be positive do not say if you are blah 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 then don't reply because what this tells him is you have had so many bad experiences that you already have your walls up and your guard up. And men are not looking for somebody who's going to push them away or who's looking to push people away. Men are looking for the type of woman who has herself in check. And if you're wondering what kind of woman a man is looking for, I did um, put in No More Assholes, the seven qualities that men look for in a woman. I also have a YouTube video that uh, talks about that. If you go to my... Um, Relationship Magic Happens Here playlist on YouTube. You'll find that video. Uh, I also wrote an article about that on my website, canadasdatingcoach.com in my blog. So if you do a search for the seven qualities men look for in women, you can find it there as well. Um, I really just do everything I can to get this information out to you because it is so important to helping you amazing people find each other. So one of the things that he looks for is a woman who can be, you know, the, the, the pillar of strength in the relationship from time to time. So by showing that you are strong enough to withstand the negativities of your past relationships and not vomit them into your profile, he, he'll, he's going to see that because there's so many women who are vomiting in their profile. You'll be a breath of fresh air if you're not doing that. So don't vomit negativity into your profile. Keep everything you write positive. Don't tell him what he should be. Ladies, let me tell you, you know a man is into you. This is one of those clues right now. You know when a man is into you when he says, what are you looking for in a man? This is a huge question because now he's seeing you by his side 
and he's wondering if he fits by your side. So don't describe what you're looking for. Describe yourself, describe what you love, and let him assume that you are looking for someone like-minded. Let him deduce that by reading it into your profile. And here's a bonus tip for you. The people that are sending you messages online only reply to the ones who are obviously like-minded in their message to you. Don't waste your time with other people. Don't. And, and you don't need to apply to everybody. Like when men come to me and they say, why aren't women responding to my messages? I ask them, why does she have to? Women don't need to reply to every single indication of interest from a man. It is not our duty to respond to that. We don't have to. When it comes to love, you put your effort out there and then you release the outcome. If you were always sticking your hand out and saying, gimme, that is not a way to start a relationship. And that is exactly what I tell them. If you see someone that you like and you send a message out, you release the outcome and you move on to the next thing that's on your mind. Yeah, Laura says, amen. Uh, Yasmin says, is there an example of a good bio that we can hear? Um, Yasmin, I would say the example is the one that I would write for you. I, I actually, that's a really, really great question. And I think next time I touch on this topic, I would definitely put something up um, that would, that I think would be a great example. Um, that is a great, great question. Uh, Yasmin, how many selfies should you have when online dating or should we eliminate all? Uh, you know what, like it can be a selfie as long as it's you doing something you love, right? So you want, like, I mean, if you're on a hiking trail and you're by yourself and you think, wow, this, this is a great place to take a picture that represents me and there's no one to snap that picture for you, then by all means, go ahead and take a selfie because it is still an action photo, right? I'm just saying, don't, don't take the selfie on the couch. You know what I mean? Don't take the selfie at the dining room table. Like, do something that you would want to do with your partner, some kind of activity that you see them beside you doing. Uh, yes, amen. Amen to, to not needing to respond to other people's expectations, ladies. Don't respond to people that you have no interest in. Let them own their emotions. You don't owe them anything. You are here to find the one that's right for you. And don't, don't dish out your energy over and over again just because you're trying to be nice because there are people who will take advantage of the fact that you're trying to be nice. Um, so, so don't because it tears you apart when those people wiggle their way in because you did open the door to them. You did let them, right? So don't. I deal with women all the time who are just way too nice. Um, you know, they, they, allow people to talk to them that uh, really are just pushing an agenda and they keep these women keep trying to communicate what it is that they need and they're wasting their time because the people that they're talking to don't care about what they need they just care about what they want and getting it when they want it so guys if you have any questions about that please tell me and Honestly, I want you to write this down. Life begins when you ask the right questions. We lead ourselves down the wrong paths when we are not asking the right questions. So be thoughtful about your direction. Don't be reactive. And when you feel emotions happen inside of you, then don't just act on them. Ask yourself questions about them. You know, maybe where did this come from or or how should I be thinking about this? Um, now, I touched on the books that I wrote earlier. I want to let you know they are still on sale online. So I checked Amazon and I also checked uh, Indigo Chapters. And the paperbacks are on sale uh, on those websites. So if you're a paperback reader, they're pretty cheap right now. They're like really inexpensive. So go ahead and you know, the three that I found on Amazon that are on sale, Comeback Queen, Fix That Shit, and Say Yes to Goodness. 
Um, they're at really steep discounts, like Comeback Queen and Say Yes to Goodness. They're cheaper than what I sell them when I'm selling paper bags, when I'm doing appearances. Uh, so this is a super, super good deal that if you're on the fence about one of those books, then go and snap one up now. Uh, so these webinars, these, the Chantal Hyde show, I do this every Tuesday at 8 PM, but once a month, this show is taken over by the no more assholes webinar. And some of you have taken the webinar already. I would love to see you come back and, and, and sort of be there for the women who are taking it for the first time. I want you to bring your challenges. I want you to bring your stories. I want you to bring your experiences. I want you to bring your questions because the things that you have faced in the past month, um, are things that they're going to face in the coming month. So you're actually going to help them gain some insight and some foresight. Lara says, I'm wanting to buy one of your books, but not sure which one to buy. Uh, so Lara, here's what my question is. Um, obviously I'm going to say you're single because you're here on this particular webinar learning about how to create an online dating profile. <clears throat> Correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm assuming you're single at this point. Where is your heart? If your heart needs mending from your last relationship, you want to start with Comeback Queen because I help you put it back together. I interviewed a bunch of women. I asked them, what do you need to know? Like women who were, who were hurt about their divorces. And I said, what do you need to know? I took all those questions and I answered them in that book. So we actually did like little individual case studies. And so I put a lot of, of, of what women go through in this book so that you can see yourself in their process and then see the solutions in my answers. Now, if you are over your last relationship and you're ready to get into the next one and you just need to know how, then the book you want is No More Assholes. And when you find somebody that you are interested in and you're going for that first kiss and you have that first kiss, immediately pick up a copy of After the First Kiss because this will get you through the insecurity phase and you will begin building an amazing life together because you're not going to turn little things into big fights. Um, I have a podcast. I've been doing my podcast regularly now. I'm doing it every Monday. So every Monday I'm releasing a new podcast. Yesterday I just released a podcast about Gwyneth Paltrow talking about how it took her a full year after getting married to her second husband, or I don't know if it's second at this point. Didn't she marry Brad Pitt for a bit? Um, anyways, her latest marriage, uh, they took a full year before moving in together. And I actually agree with her for taking that long. So you can listen to that and find out why. I am releasing new videos on YouTube every week. So you can sign up for my YouTube channel as well. We are creating some high production videos. I'm super excited about that. We're doing some B-roll, which is basically extras um, filming on this Friday. So fingers crossed for some nice sunny weather because we're going to do some romantic sunset scenes. Uh, Stephanie says, so if I'm just starting to date, should I be reading No More Assholes and which one next? Yeah, so Stephanie, I hope I just answered that. Definitely reading No More Assholes and quickly followed by After the First Kiss. Very quickly followed. Um, and then also you can find me on Instagram, you guys. I'm, I am on Instagram all the time. I'm also checking Facebook all the time. So, uh, you know, follow me, respond chat with me on there. It's just, I love, love, love hearing from you guys. I love hearing your voice. I love knowing that you're there. I love your follows. Um, and then for those of you who want some extra help, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and I love working with you because when people come to me for one-on-one, -on -one, which basically I call it the step-by-step, and I keep you moving forward. There is no moving backwards. Guys, I know that dating is tricky terrain. I know that it is. Trust me, I've been there. I am in it all the time. I have people who pay me to go online and set them up. Uh, people who pay me for matchmaking. So I know what it is that you're facing. And I know how difficult it is, especially when you've had rough relationships. And finding that right partner really takes a lot of little things done just oh so right. 
So be sure that if you really want, if you, you know, if there's somebody on the horizon or if you're having trouble, um, you know, not repeating the same patterns over and over, if you keep picking the wrong type over and over, uh, if it's, if you're in a relationship and it's on and off and it's abusive and you're having trouble getting out, these are all things that I help you with and I keep you moving forward so that you don't fall backwards into the same thing. I am so good at this. As long as you follow my advice, you will not believe how quickly you progress into something amazing, even if that amazing thing is a newfound sense of empowerment and self-esteem and self-appreciation and self-satisfaction. Because guys, I've, I've got, like, I sprinkle pixie dust everywhere I go and I have built myself from the ground up. I relate to your journey. If you've read any of my books, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I know where you are and I know what you need to do to get to where I am. And where am I right now? I've been with my husband for 14 years. He treats me like a queen. We haven't had a fight in four years. We make out every single day, including today. We laugh like crazy. We are blissfully happy. I am happy. It is such an incredible place to be. I want to bring you here. And I think when we get here, us, us, the adults, and we start exhibiting this behavior, people, we are monkeys designed to imitate. When you have a functional relationship, when you are happy, when you know how to take care of yourself and a partner, guess what your children learn? how to take care of themselves and a partner. It is so beautiful and I want to make it work for you, uh, which is why I do payment plans. So, you know, sometimes people come to me and, you know, they want to start, but it's, it's hard to start right now. Then let's talk. Let's talk about how we can make this work for you because I I'm so passionate about this. This, this lights me up. This gets me up every morning. Um, I just, I just don't even, it, like I'm, I'm speechless because I'm so into this notion, this fact that happiness is within the palm of our hands, that an ideal relationship is attainable, that we can be broken and become fixed. And we can find someone broken and show them how to be fixed. And we can become happy together. Like my husband, it's people look at my husband. My husband has a shop and I'll bring him supper and all. Like whenever I bring him a meal, I always go find him wherever he is. And I tell him that, you know, baby, I brought you lunch. Baby, I brought you supper. And we have a kiss. And often the person he's talking to will say, wow, like I don't have that with my wife. They envy what he has because it is so obviously good. So obviously good. We were at a party this past weekend and there was like a lot of couples there. And we were, we were told, all right, you love birds, like cut it out, you know, and, and like we're the longest running couple or actually one of the longest running couples that were there. Um, but we're the love birds. And I love that. I love that our love is so obvious and it's so beautiful and it's so heartfelt. Um, and I want this for you. I want to help you achieve it. So if there is any way that I can help you achieve it, let me know. Let's work together. Let's make this happen. So, all right. We kept it under an hour and a half tonight. Ladies, um, opening the chat up. Uh, so... I want to know what should we talk about next week? What would you like to talk about? What is our topic next week? Let's hear you on this one. What would you like to hear? What should we dive into? What are your ideas? Where do you want to go next? Um, you know, what do you think might be a stumbling point 
as you date? Uh, where can I shine a light? Where can I make something easier for you? Let's get your, let's get your feedback on this because I want to know what I'm going to create next week for you. So what do you think? Let me see. What can we do? How about how to do a first date? Um, Yasmin says all the red flags. I feel like that would be a great topic. Okay. So let's get some votes here. Ladies, what do you think about that? Do you want to know about the red flags? Do you want to know? I can, I can talk about the 12 qualities that distinguish whether he's a guy or a man. So do you want me to get into that? So the, the 12, the 12 character traits, the 12 things, the 12 signs that tell you whether this is a guy or a man. Let's get some votes on that. Who wants that? <clears throat> Let's see what you people think. So I think we're going for, Stephanie says, how to transition from online to offline when dating. So after one date or two, what if you both met online? Uh, Stephanie says the red flags are good too. So we'll say we have uh, one vote for how to transition from on online to offline and two for all the red flags. So let's see what the other ladies are saying. Sherry says, I'll be here for whatever the subject is. Good night, ladies. So Sherry doesn't care. So we can do one and then the other. Um, so how about we first talk about the red flags and then the week after we can talk about transitioning from online to offline. What do you ladies think of that? I think, I think that's a good thing to do. So you know what guys, I'm going to go with that. So next, uh, yes, next week's topic is going to be transitioning from our, sorry. So the, the 12 ways of knowing if it's a guy or a man. And then the week after that is going to be the no more assholes. Um, the, the no more assholes webinar. So feel free to join in on that and give the new ladies your feedback. Um, and then the week after that, we're going to talk about going from online to in person. And this will be your, you know, how to, how to meet up, how to make plans for a first date, how to have a first date. Um, yeah, in order would encounter problems exactly, right? So first red flags and then how to handle meeting people in person and have that first date, taking it offline into the real world. So amazing. I love, 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 love what we're talking about, ladies. Love the stuff that we're getting into. I love that you're learning. I love your stories. I love how you are applying it. This is so amazing. I wish you all an incredible, incredibly good night. I hope you all have a fantastic sleep and I'm going to sign off for tonight and I will see you right here 8 p.m. next week. I love you guys. Love, love, love you and I am going to talk to you very soon.